but factually there was no possibility of his marrying all the gopis but because they had that natural tendency to accept krishna as the supreme husband the relationship between the gopis and krishna is called parakaya rasa this parakaya rasa is ever existent in golok vrindavana in the spiritual sky where there is no possibility of the inability which characterizes parakaya ras in the material world in the material world parakaya ras is abominable whereas in the spiritual world it is present in the super excellent relationship of krishna and the gopis there are many relationships with krishna master and servant friend and friend parent and son and lover and beloved out of all these rasas the parakaya ras is considered to be the topmost this material world is perverted reflection of the spiritual world it is just like reflection of a tree on the bank of a reservoir of water the topmost part of the tree is seen as the lowest part similarly parakaya ras when pervertedly reflected in this material world is most abominable therefore when people imitate the rasa dance of krishna with the gopis they simply enjoy the perverted abominable reflection of the transcendental parakaya ras there is no possibility of enjoying this transcendental parakaya ras within the material world it is stated in the shrimad bhagavatam that one should not imitate this parakaya ras even in dream or imagination those who do this those who do so drink the most deadly poison when krishna the supreme enjoyer desired to enjoy the company of the gopis on that full moon night of the sharad reason exactly at that very moment the moon the lord of the stars appeared in the sky displaying its most beautiful features the full moon night of the sharad season is the most beautiful night in the year in the indian city of agra in uttar pradesh province there is a great monument called the taj mahal which is a tomb made of first class marble stone during the night of the full moon of the sharad season many foreigners go to see the beautiful reflections of the moon on the tomb thus this full moon night is celebrated even today for its beauty when the full moon rose in the east it tinged everything with a reddish color with the rising of the moon the whole sky appeared smeared by red kumkum when a husband long separated from his wife returns home he decorates the face of his wife with red kumkum this long expected moon rise of the sharad season was thus smearing the eastern sky the appearance of the moon increased krishna's desire to dance with the gopis the forests were filled with fragrant flowers the atmosphere was cooling and festive when lord krishna began to blow his flute the gopis all over vrindavan became enchanted the attraction to the vibration of the flute increased a thousand times due to the rising full moon the red horizon the calm and cool atmosphere and the blossoming flowers all the gopis were by nature very much attracted to krishna's beauty and when they heard the vibration of his flute they become became apparently lustful to satisfy the senses of krishna immediately upon hearing the vibration of the flute they all left their respective engagements and proceeded to the spot where krishna was standing while they ran very swiftly their hearing swung back and forth they all rushed toward the place known as uh, bamshi vata yes bamshi vata some of them were engaged in milking cows but they left their milking business half finished and immediately went to krishna one of them had just collected milk and put it in a milk pan on the stove to boil but she did not care whether the milk over boiled and spilled she immediately left to go see krishna some of them were breastfeeding their small babies and some were engaged in distributing food to the members of their families 
but they left all such engagements and immediately rushed toward the spot where Krishna was playing his flute. Some were engaged in serving their husbands and some were themselves engaged in eating, but caring neither to serve their husbands nor eat, they immediately left. Some of them wanted to decorate their faces with cosmetic ointments and to dress themselves very nicely before going to Krishna. But unfortunately, they could not finish their cosmetic decorations or put on their clothes in the right way because of their anxiety to meet Krishna immediately. Their faces were decorated hurriedly and were haphazardly finished. Some even put the lower part of their clothes on the upper part of their bodies and the upper part on the lower part. While all the gopis were hurriedly leaving their respective places, their husbands, brothers and fathers were all struck with wonder to know where they were going. Being young girls, they were protected either by husbands, elder brothers or fathers. All their guardians forbade them to go to Krishna, but they disregarded them. When a person becomes attracted by Krishna and is in full Krishna consciousness, he does not care for any worldly duties, even though very urgent. Krishna consciousness is so powerful that it gives everyone relief from all material activities. Srila Rupa Goswami has written a very nice verse wherein one gopi advises another. My dear friend, if you desire to enjoy the company of material society, friendship and love, then please do not go to see that smiling boy, Govinda, who is standing on the bank of the Yamuna and playing his flute, his lips brightened by the beams of the full moonlight. Sri Rupa Goswami indirectly instructs that one who has been captivated by the beautiful smiling face of Krishna has lost all attraction of attraction for material enjoyments. This is the test of advancement in Krishna consciousness. A person advancing in Krishna consciousness must lose interest in material activities and personal sense gratification. Some of the gopis were factually detained from going to Krishna by their husbands and were locked up by force within their rooms. Being unable to go to Krishna, they began to meditate upon his transcendental form by closing their eyes. They already had the form of Krishna within their minds. They proved to be the greatest yogis. As is stated in Bhagavad Gita, a person who is constantly thinking of Krishna within his heart with faith and love is considered to be the topmost of all yogis. Actually, a yogi concentrates his mind on the form of Lord Vishnu. That is real yoga. Krishna is the original form of all Vishnu tattvas. The gopis who could not go to Krishna personally, so they began to meditate on him as perfect yogis. In the conditioned state of the living entities, in the conditioned stage of the living entities, there are two kinds of results of fruitive activities. The conditioned living entity who is constantly engaged in sinful activities has suffering as his result. And he who is engaged in pious activities has material enjoyment as a result. In either case, material suffering or material enjoyment, the sufferer or enjoyer is conditioned by material nature. The gopi associates of Krishna who assembled in the place where Krishna was appearing were from different groups. Most of the gopis were eternal companions of Krishna. As stated in the Brahma Samhita, Ananda Chinmaya Rasa Pratibhavita Bhiha Hila Bhiha In the spiritual world, the associates of Krishna, especially the gopis, are manifestations of the pleasure potency of Lord Krishna. They are expansions of Srimati Radharani. But when Krishna exhibits his transcendental pastimes within the material world in some of the universes, not only the eternal associates of Krishna come, come, but also those who are being promoted to that status from this material world. So, some of the gopis who joined Krishna's pastimes within this material world were coming from the status of ordinary human beings. 
if they had been bound by fruit of action they were fully freed from the reactions of karma by constant meditation meditation on krishna they their severely painful yearnings caused by their not being able to see krishna freed them from all sinful reactions and their ecstasy of transcendental love for krishna in his absence ended all their reactions to material pious activities the conditioned soul is subjected to birth and death either either by pious or sinful activities but the gopis who began to meditate on krishna transcended both positions and became purified and thus elevated to the status of the gopis already expanded by his pleasure potency all the gopis who concentrated their minds on krishna in the spirit of paramour love became fully purified of all the fruitive reactions of material nature and some of them immediately gave up their material bodies developed under the three modes of material nature maharaj parikshit heard sukhadev goswami explain the situation of the gopis who assembled with krishna in the rasa dance when he heard that some of the gopis simply by concentrating on, on krishna as their paramour became free from all contamination of material birth and death he said the gopis did not know that krishna is the supreme personality of godhead they accepted him as a beautiful boy and considered him to be their paramour so how was it possible for them to get freed from the material condition just by thinking of the paramour one should consider here that krishna and ordinary living beings are qualitatively one the ordinary living beings being part and parcel of krishna are all, are also brahman but krishna is the supreme para brahman the question is if it is possible for a devotee to get free from the material contaminated state simply by thinking of krishna then why should this not be possible for others who are also thinking of someone if one is thinking of a husband or son or if anyone at all is thinking of another living entity then since all living entities are also brahman why are all those who thus think of others not freed from the contaminated stage of material nature this is a very intelligent question because there are always atheists imitating krishna in these days of kali yuga there are many rascals who think themselves to be as good as krishna and who cheat people into behaving into be- believing that thinking of them is as good as thinking of lord krishna parikshit maharaj apprehending the future dangerous condition of blind followers of demon- demoniac imitators therefore asked this question and fortunately it is recorded in shrimad bhagavatam to warn innocent people that thinking of an ordinary man and thinking of krishna are not the same actually even thinking of the demigods cannot compare with thinking of krishna it is warned in the vaishnava tantra that one who puts vishnu narayana or krishna on the same level as the demigods is called a pakhandi or rascal on hearing this question from maharaj parikshit sukhdev goswami replied my dear king your question is already answered even before this incident because parikshit maharaj wanted to clear up the situation his spiritual master answered him very intelligently why are you again asking about the same subject matter which has already been explained to you why are you so forgetful a spiritual master is always in the superior position so he has the right to to chastise his disciple in this way sukhdev so goswami knew that maharaj parikshit asked the question not for his own understanding but as a warning to the future innocent people who might think others to be equal to krishna sukhdev so goswami then reminded parikshit maharaj about the salvation of shishupal Shishupal was always envious of Krishna and because of his envy of his envy Krishna killed him but since Krishna is the supreme personality of godhead Shishupal gained salvation 
simply by seeing him if an envious person can get salvation simply by concentrating his mind on krishna then what to speak of the gopis who are so dear to krishna and always think of him in love there must be some difference between the enemies and the friends if krishna's enemies could get freed from material contamination and become one with the supreme then certainly his dear friends like the gopis can achieve such freedom and much more besides that in the bhagavad gita krishna is called rishikesha sukadev goswami also said that krishna is rishikesha the super soul whereas an ordinary man is a conditioned soul covered by the material body krishna and krishna's body are the same because he is rishikesha any person making a distinction between krishna and krishna's body is fool number 1 krishna is rishikesha and adhokshaja these two particular words have been used by sukadev goswami in this instance rishikesha is the super soul and adhokshaja is the supreme personality of god him transcendental to the material nature just to show favor to the ordinary living entities out of his causeless mercy he appears as he is unfortunately foolish persons mistake him to be an ordinary person and so they become eligible to go to hell sukhdev goswami continued to inform maharaj parikshit that krishna is not an ordinary person but rather the supreme personality of god is imperishable immeasurable and without any material qualities but full of all spiritual qualities he appears in this material world out of his causeless mercy and whenever he appears he appears as he is without change this is confirmed in the bhagavad gita where the lord says that he appears by by his spiritual potency he does not appear under the control of the material potency the material potency is under his control in the bhagavad gita it is stated that the material potency is working under his superintendence it is also confirmed in the brahma samhita that the material potency known as durga is acting just like a shadow of the substance the conclusion is that if one somehow or other becomes attached attached to krishna or attracted to him either because of his qualities of beauty opulence fame strength renunciation or knowledge through affection or friendship or even through lust anger or fear then one salvation and freedom from material contamination are assured in the bhagavad gita 18th chapter the lord states that one who is engaged in preaching krishna consciousness is very dear to him a preacher has to face many difficulties in his struggle to preach pure krishna consciousness sometimes he has to suffer bodily injuries and sometimes he has to meet death to death also all this is taken as a great austerity on behalf of krishna krishna therefore has said that such a preacher is very very dear to him if krishna's enemies can expect salvation simply by concentrating their minds on him then what to speak of persons who are so dear to krishna the conclusion should be that the salvation of those who are engaged in preaching krishna consciousness in the world is guaranteed in all circumstances but such preachers never care for salvation because factually one who is engaged in krishna consciousness devotional service has already achieved salvation sukadev goswami therefore assured king king parikshit that he should always rest assured that one who is attracted by krishna attains liberation from material bondage because krishna is the transcendental master of all mystic powers when all the gopis assembled as described before krishna he began to speak to them welcoming them as well as discouraging them by world jugglery krishna is the supreme speaker he is the speaker of the bhagavad gita he can speak on the highest elevated subjects of philosophy politics economics everything and 
he also spoke before the gopis who were so dear to him he wanted to enchant them by word jugglery and thus he began to speak as follows o oh, ladies of vrindavan krishna said you are very fortunate and you are very dear to me i am very pleased that you have come here and i hope everything is well in vrindavan now please order me what can i do for you what is the purpose of your coming here in the dead of night kindly take your seats and let me know what i can do for you the gopis had come to krishna to enjoy his company to dance with him embrace him and kiss him and when krishna began to receive them very officially showing all kinds of etiquette they were surprised he was treating them like ordinary society women therefore they began to smile among themselves and though they were eagerly listen to krishna talk in that way they were surprised then krishna began to instruct them my dear friends you must know that it is now the dead of night and the forest is very dangerous at this time all the ferocious jungle animals the tigers bears jackals and bulls are prowling in the forest therefore it is very dangerous for you you cannot select a secure place now everywhere you go you will find that all these animals are loitering to find their prey i think therefore that you are taking a great risk in coming here and in the dead of night please turn back immediately without delay when he saw that they continued to smile he said i very much appreciate your bodily features all of you have nice very thin waist all of the gopis there were exquisite exquisitely beautiful they are described by the word sam so sumadhyama the standard of beauty of a woman is called to be sumadhyama when the middle portion of the body is slender krishna wanted to impress on them that they were not old enough to take care of themselves actually they required protection it was not very wise for them to come in the dead of night to krishna krishna also indicated that he was young and that they were young girls it does not look la- like very well for young girls and boys to remain together in the dead of night after hearing this advice the gopis did not seem very happy therefore krishna began to stress the point in a different way my dear friends i can understand that you have left your homes without the permission of your guardians therefore i think your mothers your fathers your elder brothers and even your sons and what to speak of your husbands must be very anxious to find you as long as you are here they must be searching in different places and their minds must be very agitated so don't tarry please go back and make them peaceful when the gopis appeared to be a little bit disturbed and angry from hearing the free advice of krishna they diverted their attention to looking at the beauty of the forest at that time the whole forest was illuminated by the bright shining of the moon and the air was blowing very silently over the blooming flowers and the green leaves of the trees were moving in the breeze krishna took the opportunity of their looking at the forest to advise them i think you have come out to see the beautiful vrindavan forest on this night he said but you must now be satisfied so return to your homes without delay i understand that you are all very chaste women so now that you have seen the beautiful atmosphere of the vrindavan forest please return home and engage in the faithful service of your respective husbands some of you must have babies by the time by this time although you are very young you must have left your small babies at home and they must be crying please immediately go back home and just feed them with your breast milk i can also understand that you have very great affection for me and out of that transcendental affection you have come here hearing my playing on the flute your feelings of love and affection for me are very appropriate because i am the supreme personality of godhead 
all living creatures are my parts and parcels and naturally they are affectionate to me so this affection for me is very welcome and i congratulate you for this now you can go back to your homes another thing i must explain to you is that for a chaste woman service to the husband without duplicity is the best religious principle not only should a woman be faithful and chaste to a husband but she should also be affectionate to the friends of her husband obedient to the father and mother of her husband and affectionate to the younger brothers of her husband and most importantly a woman must take care of her children in this way krishna explained the duty of a woman he also stressed the point of serving the husband even if he is not very good character or even if he is not very rich or fortunate or even if he is old or invalid on account of continued diseases whatever her husband's condition a woman should not divorce her husband if she actually desires to be elevated to the higher planetary system after leaving this body besides that it is considered abominable in society if a woman is unfaithful and goes searching for another man such habits will deter a woman from being elevated to the heavenly planets and the results of such habits are very degrading a married woman should not search for a paramour for this is not sanctioned by the vedic principles of life if you think that you are very much attached to me and you want my association i advise you not to personally try to enjoy me it is better for you to go home simply talk about me and think of me and by this process of constantly remembering me and chanting my names you will surely be elevated to the to the spiritual platform there is no need to stand near me please go back home the instruction given here in by the supreme personality of godhead to the gopis was not at all sarcastic such instructions should be taken very seriously by all honest women the chastity of women is specifically stressed herein by the supreme personality of godhead therefore this principle should be followed by any serious woman who wants to be elevated to a higher status of life krishna is the center of all affection for all living creatures when this affection is developed for krishna one surpasses and transcends transcendence all vedic injunctions this was possible for the gopis because they saw krishna face to face this is not possible for any woman in the conditioned state unfortunately sometimes a rascal following the philosophy of monism or oneness very irresponsibly takes advantage of this ras leela to imitate the behavior of krishna with the gopis entice many innocent women and mislead them in the name of the spiritual realization as a warning lord krishna has herein hinted that what was possible for the gopis is not possible for ordinary women although a woman can actually be elevated by advanced krishna consciousness she should not be enticed by an imposter who says that he is krishna she should concentrate her devotional activities in chanting about krishna and meditating upon him as is advised herein one should not follow the men called sahajyas the so called devotees who take everything very lightly when krishna spoke in such a discouraging way to the gopis they became very sad for they thought that their desire to enjoy the rasa dance with krishna would be frustrated thus they became full of anxiety out of great sadness the gopis began to breathe very heavily instead of looking at krishna face to face they bowed their heads and they bowed their heads and looked at the ground and they began to draw various types of curved lines on the ground with their toes they were shedding heavy tears and their cosmetic decorations were being washed from their faces the water from their eyes mixed with the kumkum on their breast and fell to the ground they could not say anything to krishna but simply stood there silently 
by their silence they express that their hearts were grievously wounded the gopis were not ordinary women in essence they were on an equal level with krishna they are his eternal associates as it is confirmed in the brahma samhita they are expansions of the pleasure potency of krishna and as his potency they are non different from him although they were depressed by the words of krishna they did not like to use harsh words against him yet they wanted to rebuke krishna for his unkind words and therefore they began to speak in the flattering voices they did not like to use harsh words against krishna because he was the dear mo continue they did not like to use harsh word against krishna because he was the dear most their heart and soul the gopis had only krishna within their hearts they were completely surrendered and dedicated souls naturally when they heard such unkind words they tried to reply but in the attempt torrents of tears fell from their eyes finally they managed to speak krishna they said you are very cruel you should not talk like that we are full fresh surrendered souls please accept us and don't talk in that cruel way of course you are the supreme personality of godhead and can do whatever you like but it is not worthy of your position to treat us in such a cruel way we have come to you leaving everything behind just to take shelter of your lotus feet we know that you are completely independent and you can do whatever you like but we request you don't reject us we are your devotees you should accept us as lord narayana accepts his devotees there are many devotees of lord narayana who worship him for salvation and he awards them salvation similarly how can you reject us when we have no shelter other than your lotus feet oh dear krishna they continued you are the supreme instructor there is no doubt about it your instructions to women to be faithful to their husbands and merciful to their children to take care of household affairs and to be obedient to the elderly members of the family are surely just according to the tenets of the shastras tenets of the shastras but we know that one may perfectly observe all these instructions of the shastras by keeping oneself under the protection of your lotus feet our husbands friends family members and children are all dear and pleasing to us only because of your presence for you are the supreme super soul of all living creatures without your presence one is worthless when you leave the body the body immediately dies and according to the injunction of the shastras a dead body must immediately be thrown into a river or burned therefore ultimately you are the dear most personality of this world by placing our faith and love in your personality we are assured of never being bereft bereft of husband friends sons or daughters if a woman accepts you as the supreme husband then she will never be bereft of her husband as in the bodily concept of life if we accept you as our ultimate husband then there is no question of being separated divorced or widowed you are the eternal husband eternal son eternal friend and eternal master and one who enters into a relationship with you is eternally happy since you are the teacher of all religious principles your lotus feet have to be worshiped first accordingly the shastra state acharya upasana upasana the worship of your lotus feet is the first principle besides that as stated in the bhagavad gita you are the only enjoyer you are the only proprietor and you are the only friend as such we have come to you leaving aside all so called friend society and love and now you have become our enjoyer let us be everlastingly enjoyed by you we are proprietor for that is your natural claim and we are supreme friend for you are naturally so let us thus embrace you as the supreme as the supreme beloved then the gopis told lotus eyed krishna please do not discourage our long cherished desires to have you as a husband 
any intelligent man who cares for his own self interest reposes all his loving spirit in you persons who are simply misled by the external energy who want to be satisfied with false concepts try to enjoy themselves apart from you the so called husband friend son daughter father and mother are all simply sources of material misery no one is made happy in this material world by having a so called father mother husband son daughter and friend although the father and mother are expected to protect the children there are many children who are suffering for want of food and shelter there are many good physicians but when a patient dies no physician can re- re- uh, revive him there are many means of protection but when one is doomed none of the protective measures can help and without your protection the so called sources of protection simply become sources of continued distress we therefore appeal to you dear lord of all lord, lords please do not kill our long cherished desires to have you as our supreme husband dear krishna as women we are certainly satisfied when our hearts are engaged in the activities of family affairs but our hearts have already been stolen by you we can no longer engage them in family affairs besides that although you have repeatedly asked us to return home and that is a very appropriate instruction unfortunately we have been stunned here our legs have no power to move a step from your lotus feet therefore if even at your request we return home what shall we do there we have lost all our ability to act without you instead of engaging our hearts in family affairs as women we have now developed a different type of lust which is continually blazing in our hearts now we request you dear krishna to extinguish that fire with your beautiful smile and transcendental vibration in emanating from your lips if you do not dis- if you do not agree to do us this favor we shall certainly be burned in the fire of separation in that condition we shall simply think of you and your beautiful features and give up our bodies immediately in that way we think it will be possible for us to reside at your lotus feet in the next life dear krishna if you say that if we go home our respective husbands will satisfy the lusty flame of our desire we can only say that that is no longer possible you have given us a chance to be enjoyed by you in the forest and have touched our breast once in the past which we accepted as a blessing as do the goddess of fortune who are enjoyed in the vaikuntha lokas by you since we have tasted this transcendental enjoyment we are no longer interested in going to any one but you for the satisfaction of the of our lust dear krishna the lotus feet of the goddess of fortune are always worshiped by the demigods although she is always resting on your chest in the vaikunth planets she underwent great austerity and penance to have some shelter at your lotus feet which are always covered by tulsi leaves your lotus feet are the proper shelter of your servitors and the goddess of fortune instead of abiding on your chest comes down and worships your lotus feet we have now placed ourselves under the dust of your lotus feet please do not reject us for we are fully surrendered souls dear krishna you are known as hari you destroy all the miseries of all living entities specific, specifically of those who have left their homes and family attachment and have completely taken to you we have left our homes with the hope that we shall completely devote and dedicate dedicate our lives to your service we are simply begging to be engaged as your servants we do not wish to ask you to accept us as your wives simply accept us as your maid servants since you are the supreme personality of godhead and like to enjoy the parakaya ras and are famous as a transcendental woman hunter we have come to satisfy your transcendental desires we are also after our own satisfaction was simply by looking at your smiling face and we have become very lusty we have come before you decorated with all ornaments and dress but until you embrace us all our garments and beautiful features remain incomplete you are the supreme person 
and if you complete a dressing attempt as the purusha bhushana as the puru purusha bhushana or the male ornament then all our desires are bhushana or the male ornament then all our desires and bodily decorations are complete dear krishna we have simply been captivated by seeing you with tilak and with earrings and by seeing your beautiful face covered with scattered hair and bearing your extraordinary smile not only that but we are also attracted by your arms which always give assurance to the surrendered soul and although we are also attracted by your chest which is always embraced by the goddess of fortune we do not wish to take her position we shall simply be satisfied by being your maid servants if you accuse us however of encouraging prostitution then we can only ask where is that woman within these three worlds who is not captivated by your beauty and the rhythmic songs vibrated by your transcendental flute within these three worlds there is no distinction between men and women in relation to you because both men and women belong to the marginal potency or prakriti no one is actually the enjoyer or the male everyone is meant to be enjoyed by you there is no woman within these three worlds but cannot but who cannot but deviate from her path of chastity once she is attracted to you because your beauty is so sublime that not only men and women but also cows birds beasts and even trees fruits and plants everyone and everything become enchanted and what to speak of ourselves it is however definitely decided that as lord vishnu is always protecting the demigods from the onslaught of demons so you have also advented in vrindavan just to give the result residents protection from all kinds of dis- all kinds of distress oh dear friend of the distress kindly place your hand on our burning breast as well as on our heads because we have surrendered unto you as your eternal maid servant if you think however that your lotus like palms might be burned to ashes if placed on our burning breast let us assure you that your palms will feel pleasure instead of pain as the lotus flower although very delicate and soft enjoys the scorching heat of the sun upon hearing the anxious plea of the gopis the supreme personality of godhead smiled and being very kind to the gopis the lord although self sufficient began to embrace them and kiss them as they desired when krishna smiling looked at the faces of the gopis the beauty of the faces became a hundred times enchanted when he was enjoying them in their midst he appeared just like the full moon surrender, surrounded by millions of shining stars thus the supreme personality of godhead surrounded by the hundreds of gopis and decorated decorated with a flower garland of many colors began to wander within the vrindavan forest sometimes singing to the singing to himself and sometimes singing with the gopis in this way the lord and the gopis reached the cool sandy bank of the yamuna where there were lilies and lotus flowers in such a transcendental atmosphere the gopis and krishna began to enjoy one another while they were walking on the bank of the yamuna krishna would sometimes put his arms around a gopi's head breast or waist pinching one another and joking and looking at one another they enjoyed when krishna touched the bodies of the gopis their lust to embrace him increased they all enjoyed these pastimes thus the gopis were blessed with all mercy by the supreme personality of godhead for they enjoyed his company without a tinge of mundane sex life the gopis however soon began to feel very proud thinking themselves to be the most fortunate women in the universe due to being favored by the company of krishna lord krishna who is known as keshava could immediately understand their pride caused by the great fortune of enjoying him personally and in order to show them his causeless mercy and to curb their false pride 
he immediately disappeared from the scene, exhibiting his opulence of renunciation. The supreme personality of Godhead is always full with six kinds of opulences, and this is an instance of the opulence of renunciation. This renunciation confirms Krishna's total non-attachment. He is always self-sufficient and is not dependent on anything. This is the platform on which his transcendental pastimes are enacted. Thus ends the Bhakti Vedanta purport of the 29th chapter of Krishna, the Rasa Dance Introduction. Thank you. Well, we've reached the end of our time. <laughs> oh, jeez. Do I have that little thing? Everything goes somewhere. Okay. Are there any questions? Mm -hmm. Yes. Maharaj Hari Krishna. Maharaj is someone's spiritual master has done something abominable. I'm sorry, this is not a question about the text. The, your question is not appropriate at the moment. Is there someone else who has a question? Okay, we can have Kirtan. Yes, yes, yes. Um, oh, is it on? Um, it's, it, it was saying there, Maharaj, that um, we're not to enjoy this material world. But Krishna is to enjoy us. Yeah. It's very hard to enjoy. We're not enjoyers. Yeah. And Krishna is enjoyed, meant to enjoy us. Yeah. And that's very hard for us. It's hard to understand how, how can Krishna Krishna enjoys us because he enjoys devotional service. He doesn't enjoy our material contribution. Prabhupada said Krishna doesn't need your rice, doll, and chapatis. But he appreciates the love and devotion. Prabhupada gave the example that a uh, child at dinner offers the father, would you like a little cake? It's very nice. <laughs> So the father becomes very pleased. Oh, is it nice? Let me. So what's a piece of cake to a grown man? And anyway, he, he bought the cake. He's the one who's provided it. But he's uh, attracted by the affection of the child. Oh, yes, is it nice? So in this way, Krishna doesn't need our material contribution, but he. Uh, kindly wants to invite the living entities to resume their position of, of serving him. Mm -hmm. well, I, like, at least in my case, Maharaj, I can't see Krishna. I'm not so advanced. So. You may not see Krishna, but you can serve Krishna without seeing. Mm -hmm. Just like we're going to do kirtan, so we'll be serving Krishna. We won't see Krishna, but we'll hear Krishna. So hearing is more important than seeing. First hearing, and seeing will come in due course. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah, okay, one more question. Hare Krishna, one thing I heard uh, when I was visiting over to Eco Village, they were also speaking about the gopis putting the undergarments on the head and the top on the bottom. And they said, in this life, we're looking so much for perfection. But in the spiritual world, imperfection is more perfect than perfection because it increases the, the bath. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And, uh, and I was wondering if the gopis are the most pure devotees of Krishna. How come there's still pride within their hearts? Even the most pure devotees may sometimes develop a little pride. Or Krishna wanted to show something, some instruction. That even the gopis, if they 
become a little proud, they get tossed. Shall we stop here? Here you can take this. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, 
Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna
कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. संकीर्तन यज्ञ की जाए आयोम स्वाद आज के चर्च में दो एसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराज सुपाद जय आनंद कोटि वैष्णव की जय नाम चर्च में श्री दास ठाकुर जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर Shri Vashadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopinath Shama Kundu Radha Kundu Giti Govardhan Ki Jai Vrindavan Tham Ki Jai Navadip Tham Ki Jai Jagannath Puri Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Jamana Mai Ki Jai Tulsi Devi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai All Glories to You Sambal Devotees all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. Gaur Premanande and 